So we'll do the second floor now after we're fairly comfortable with what we laid out on the first floor. And remember, at some point in time, we'll probably have to go down and modify uh, the first floor. We might move a wall. If you remember from the, when I put the garage door in, I saw that there wasn't enough space. So I very simply moved one of the walls to give me a little bit more room for the, for the garage door. And I might have to do the same thing as I start laying out the second floor. I might need a little bit more space up there to put in a bedroom or a bathroom or a closet or anything that I decide I might need to increase the size. Well, it's very simple to just move the wall below, which will then um, at the same time move the wall above. So uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, the, the layout to begin with. But if you remember, before I really got into any kind of uh, laying out of the first floor in greater detail, I just wanted to take a look at the second floor and I did a quick sketch to see how I thought the second floor might work. And remember, I had the stairs right here and I said, well, if I put the stairs over here, that gives me more room for this uh, bedroom. And so I, I quickly realigned the first floor so that the stairs would be on the outside, the back wall. And uh, I might have to do that again. I understand that. But anyway, I made that sketch. I saved it as a JPEG. And then I simply inserted it into this drawing. I'm now on the second floor, not the first floor anymore. I'm drawing. I'm going to put my walls in while I'm looking at the second floor. And I simply inserted that sketch into my drawing. If you have two monitors, then you might prefer to put that sketch on the second monitor. But it's entirely up to you. But anyway, this is a reminder to me of how I want to lay out the second floor. Now, these are the walls that we made for the second floor. And a nice thing to do here as you're building your model is do your 3D view. So I'm going to go up and click on that little house icon. Always save the project. You'll never be sorry that you did. And now I have my 3D view. To, the easiest way to rotate this is actually pick an object on the model, hold the shift key down, hold the mouse wheel down, and now you can spin it around and your model will rotate about the object that you have highlighted. So the purpose of this is simply to, for me to look at, you can see that the beauty of the stacked walls that we built. We built these as uh, two-story walls, and so we already have our, our second floor wall, exterior walls in our model. And you can see the openings that I put in, and I didn't notice, but I had deleted the garage door. But that's not a big deal. I'll go back and put that in later. And I have my doors. Don't have any floors in yet, but that's okay. And so I want to look at my 3D model while I'm working on the floor plan. And so what I want to do is have the two windows open at the same time. I have my first floor tab and my 3D tab. And if I type the letters WT, look what happens. It, puts, it makes two windows now. So I can look at my model in 3D and work on my model in the floor plan at the same time. And I'll be able to see what, what I've done. So step one in here was simply to put this inserted as an image so that I have it to re refer to. Step two is to make that 3D and then toggle my window so that I can see both windows at the same time. And the third thing I want to do is I want to be able to see, these are my second floor walls, but I want to be able to see the first floor walls as an underlay. So in order to do that, while this window is active, I can come over to my properties dialog box, scroll down to look for the underlay. And let's see where that is. It should be here. Here we go, underlay. And right now I'm not showing anything as an underlay, but I wanna see the first floor as my underlay. So when I click on that and apply it, look what happens. I can't, uh, change any of that. It's just an underlay right now. Uh, my second floor, my active floor, and these are, I don't think I can change that. Let's see. 
Well, guess what? I can, uh, but I don't want to. I just want to see where my first floor walls are because I want to be able to uh, put my second floor walls on the first floor. I wanted these, I didn't realize I could move those. I don't want to move them. Uh, but anyway, so now let's put in a second floor wall. Architecture, wall, two by four is fine. Where does the start? The base constraint is the second floor. The top constraint is going to be the second floor ceiling or top of second floor wall. Okay, now I'll just come over here and put my wall in using the center line so that's not good and when i insert my wall i want the face finished face to be my insertion point so now when i click on this and bring it down it looks like it's right on top of where i want it to be and I might, I might want to continue that across. I don't know yet. But see what I did now? Now I have, I just put this wall in right here. That's my second floor wall. I want it to line up with the first floor wall that's there. So I know I have that. And what I did here by mistake was I minimized my ribbon. So I'm going to click on this. It'll toggle through the display options until I get back to the kind of ribbon that I want to see, and that's the full ribbon. There we go. So now I have the full ribbon back. I accidentally minimized that so that it was taking up less real estate. All right, so let's go back to architecture, wall, and let's go over here and say that this wall is going to start here. And I'm confused why I'm not seeing that wall right now. Uh, all right, so I'll do it this way. Click on that wall, create similar, and then I can come over here and grab it and put it in. I know that those walls should line up, so I'm going to use my modified tab align command, and I'm going to come over and make sure that the faces of that gypsum board line up. So when I do that, look what happens down below. It's not lined up down below. So I'm gonna to have to work on that because I want those to line up. So I might have to move some of these walls somewhere, but anyway, okay. So, all uh, right, got that started. Where's my picture? So I have a bedroom area over here and I have a bedroom that's gonna sit on top of that wall. So I'll use my create similar Create similar, and I'm going to put a wall right here. Hopefully, they're lining up. Yep, and then just to start out, I'll do that create similar again. I'll come across here with it. That might be the location, and it might not. And the same thing here, maybe I'll just copy it this time. I'm just starting to lay it out. And you can see that I'm not real concerned about the exact location. If it's going to line up with something below, that's that's kind of critical to me. But you know, starting to lay it out, it's just the beginning point. So let's go back and look at that picture. So now I have this bedroom laid out over here. I have this space kind of for the master bedroom. I don't think this wall is going to go all the way across to there. Just from looking at my sketch, it might only go to there. So I want to drag it back and I need to be able to get, I want to put this wall in because I want enough space to get into this, what is going to be the other bedroom. So uh, we'll create similar again. And I want to put a wall down here to here. And I'll simply use that fillet command, trim extend according to Revit. And I know that I need to put a door in right here. So I'm going to have to be able to get in. So that distance there should allow for the door plus another six inches on each side. So if I have a three foot door, then I know that 
this distance from the face of this to the face of that needs to be at least four feet. So I'll just click on this wall and change that to four. Now I know that walls work a little bit better than that. See? So this will be my master bedroom. This is a bedroom and a bathroom. This is a bedroom and a bathroom with the stairs. And then if I look at my sketch, I need to put in one more. This is an exterior wall, but I, for now I'll put it in. So this is an outside wall because it's, the, it's gonna be the outside of the house. But for right now, I'm just gonna put this wall here. And there's my other, there I've just put that wall in right there. That's my other bedroom. But look at this, this wall now, is a one-story garage wall, and I didn't know if it was going to be one or two stories. So now let's see what happens. How can I change that? Let's go back over to the details, see if I have a two-story garage wall. I'll use that section right there. Let's drag it down a little bit. And we'll go to that view and see if I have a two-story garage wall. I have a one-story garage wall. And oh, well, that's a two story garage wall right there. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that, go back to the second floor, and I'm simply going to let's see if I can change that wall, that exterior garage wall. I know it's this one, so I'm going to try the match properties. I'm going to say match this, whoops, match properties. Match. I want, this is what I want the wall to be, and I'm going to click on this wall, and I'm going to click on this wall, and I'm going to click on this wall, and look what happened. Those walls became the two-story garage walls, because that's part of my second floor. And so now I've laid out the second floor, and that's great for the stopping point for the next tutorial, for this tutorial to stop at. It wasn't uh, all that difficult to put some walls in on the second floor. They're not exactly where I want them to be on the second floor, but in the next tutorial and in the upcoming class, I will also show you how to do that. And then simply we'll go in and fine tune it like we did on the first floor um, and see if everything works. And if, if it doesn't, if I need more space on the, on the second floor, I might start moving some of the first floor walls in order for me to do that. But take a look here. I'm going to spin this around real quickly. And this is what we did. Uh, this is what we did. So you can take a look at that. I just put in some walls upstairs. I have second floor wall here. So that's going to be the bedroom. That's going to be a bedroom. That's going to be a bedroom. And that's going to be the master bedroom. And so it was really nice to take a look at what was going on there and see how I changed those garage walls here. It's a one story wall because the garage has nothing over it. But here, I actually have a bedroom on top of the garage. So I needed to change those walls to a two story type of a wall. And remember in class, I said, well, we don't really know which one we're going to need, or in this case, I need them both. So at, at the beginning, as we made our stacked wall in the garage, we could have either decided to make a two story garage wall or a one-story garage wall. It's entirely up to you. And then as you start laying out your second floor is where you decide how you want that to be. But uh, I'm really happy with the beginning of the second floor. This is a simple place and an easy stopping point now for us in this video to just stop and, and uh, try to duplicate what I've done. Of course, you're not using my floor plan. You are using your own and uh, you can start to uh, lay out your second floor.